you want to time travel. That's cool. I mean, we've all thought about it. Whether it's stopping that embarrassing moment where you tripped in the school cafeteria, witnessing some epic event that changed mankind forever, or finding out the World Series winners for the next 50 years, time travel has been a key component of our fictional landscape since the 1800s. But when it comes to the practicalities of time travel, do you really want to break into the fourth dimension? Spaceships, grandpas, and the speed of light. They're all up next on this week's Fact Bite. Before we jump into the physics of it all, remember to hit subscribe and give us a like for more Fact Bites coming at you. Comment below and let us know what you think about time travel. So our current understanding of time as a concept comes from none other than Albert Einstein, who theorized that time is relative in his theories of relativity. Essentially, time is different depending on where you are in the universe and is impacted by gravity and velocity. Basically, the more gravity affecting an object or the faster an object moves, the less time will pass for that object. A part of this theory was proven in 2010 when scientists used two atomic clocks, one set one foot above the other. Even though they were close together, the mere 12 inches of distance had a big impact. Because gravity had a stronger pull on the clock that was lower down, time actually moved slower for that clock than the one that was higher up, proving that time is not a universal constant. This is important because it means that time is malleable and is inextricably linked with physical space. Updating the concept of our current three dimensions of space and time into the four-dimensional concept of space-time, which some scientists believe allows for the concept of time travel. If time can be plotted the way a point in three-dimensional space can, then all times are happening all the time, and it is only our position in space-time that limits our view of time. This means that the past and the future exist at the same time as the present, just beyond our ability to perceive them, and traveling between points in time could be made possible. Oof. Does your brain hurt yet? Because mine sure does. Despite the theoretical possibility of time travel, the reality is that time travel is physically impossible, and that's not a bad thing. Assuming that we figure out how to travel through time, time travel in and of itself is a terrible idea. Here's why. First, time travel itself would be dangerous. If we accept the Einsteinian concept of relative time, which most physicists do, then one of two things need to happen. Either we need a vessel to move us at the speed of light, or we need to intensify gravity so much that it warps space-time. Humans have been unable to produce anything that goes remotely close to the speed of light, and gravity of that magnitude has only been theorized to be found in black holes. Even if we were able to reproduce these extreme conditions, there's no guarantee that we wouldn't get stuck frozen in time, since at both the speed of light and the center of a black hole, time stops completely. Granted, you'd have to survive both conditions. Let's look at fighter pilots for a second. Fighter planes used in the US military can often break Mach 1, or the speed of sound. Accelerating up to that speed is measured in g-force, or gravitational force equivalent. This basically means that while you're accelerating up to the speed of 767.269 miles per hour, gravity will have a greater impact on you and will even change your weight. The g-forces experienced while accelerating in a fighter plane can be so intense that pilots can experience g-lock, or g-force loss of consciousness. That's because the gravity impacting them actually impacts their circulatory system and they can temporarily lose blood to their brain, thus losing consciousness. They can also experience respiratory problems, musculoskeletal damage, not to mention burst blood vessels near the skin. Depending on the direction of acceleration and the duration of acceleration, the average human body can withstand a significant amount of Gs, and well-trained fighter pilots can experience up to seven or eight in flight for relatively long periods of time without ill effect. 
But imagine how many Gs a human would have to endure to accelerate up to the speed of light. Remember, the speed of sound is significantly slower than the speed of light. Roughly 767 miles per hour versus 186,000 miles per second. So yeah, we die before we get there. Okay, but say you're technologically advanced enough to build a time machine that doesn't kill you or create a black hole that kills everyone else. Or you've managed to magically punch a hole in the space-time continuum and travel to the past. Still not a great idea to time travel, guys. The past would be gross. Modern plumbing, as we know it today, did not start to take effect until the mid-1800s, and even then was only for the rich. Though there were a number of indoor toilet examples prior, America's first indoor plumbing system was designed for the Tremont Hotel in Boston in 1829 by architect Isaiah Rogers. But unless you could afford to live in luxury, you either used an outhouse or just, you know, threw everything in the street. I mean, guys, I don't even like to go camping because there's no toilets. I would not want to go to the past. Throughout much of human history, they also believed that bathing was unhealthy, so you can imagine how hard it would be to breathe through your nose in ye olden times. Granted, one reason for this theory was that water caused diseases like typhus and cholera, but it wasn't until the late 1800s that people figured out it was because all the drinking water was contaminated, not because water itself was bad for you. In fact, in America, it wasn't until the 1900s that a significant effort was made to make water safe for drinking, and until then, beer and wine were our main sources of hydration. Factor in the survival rates of common illnesses and injuries of the day, and life expectancy for the majority of human history has been under 50 years of age until 1900. So if you want to go back in time and survive, don't go too far. Or bring your own penicillin. Speaking of survival, are you even competent enough to travel back in time? We've already talked about toilets, but remember, a lot of our modern conveniences have only been perfected in the 21st century. Heating a home has always been easy, you know, if you have ready access to coal or a steady supply of trees to chop down. But air conditioning has only been widely available since the 1950s, and almost non-existent before 1900. Can you grow and hunt your own food? You probably want to stick to the 20th century. The first supermarket as we'd know it didn't open until 1916. The very first Piggly Wiggly, father of the modern American grocery store, opened in September of that year and revolutionized the way Americans shopped. Now we take supermarkets for granted, but back in the 20th century, just having a basket while you shopped was a major game changer. And it's a good thing they waited until 1916, 10 years after the formation of the Food and Drug Administration. Though efforts had been made prior to 1906 to regulate the consumer product marketplace, it wasn't until the publication of Upton Sinclair's novel The Jungle that a real outcry was made over the safety of the food we produce and sell. And if you plan on heading way back, you better know how to ride a horse. For most of history, humans got around on foot or by pack animals, like horses and mules. The first steam engine that could carry people? Not invented until 1797 by the Stockton and Darlington Railroad Company in England. The first car? You'll have to wait until 1886, when Carl Friedrich Benz and Gottlieb Daimler filed patents for the very first automobile. Oh, and you want airplanes? Yeah. Mark your calendar for December 17th, 1903. You can have Siri remind you to book a coach to Kitty Hawk and see the first airplane take flight. Of course, Siri won't be available until 2011, so you may want to bring a date book and write it down yourself. Okay, so you're some sort of superhuman prepper able to withstand mass epidemics and also can your own peaches. But the past is still a rough time to be alive. Human rights have not always been guaranteed. Just look at America. Up until 1865, it was legally okay for people to own other people. African American men weren't guaranteed the right to vote in this country until the 15th Amendment was ratified in 1870. Women weren't guaranteed the right to vote until the 19th Amendment in 1920. And enforcement of voting rights for minorities, though guaranteed by the Constitution, was not officially signed into law until 1965. 
And voting was a basic principle that America was founded on. The 40-hour work week was not signed into law in the U.S. until 1940, when Congress amended the Fair Labor Standards Act, and it was only two years earlier, in 1938, that a law was passed officially stating that you had to have safe working conditions for children. Listen, I'm not saying we have a perfect system today, but it's got to be better than it was yesterday, right? And if none of that deters you and you still want to go back in time, ask yourself this. Do you want to be responsible for screwing up the space-time continuum as we know it? Depending on who you subscribe to, there are a number of problems with traveling back in time. Let's look at the Marty McFly conundrum, also known as the grandfather paradox. What if you go back in time and accidentally kill your own grandfather, erasing yourself from existence? But then again, if you never existed, how could you go back in time and kill your own grandfather? Are our fates predetermined based on the fact that we can never really change the past without changing the future? Look at it another way. You go back in time to kill Hitler, but then because Hitler doesn't exist, there's no reason for you to go back in time to kill him. So Hitler doesn't die and happens anyway. But then you do know who Hitler is, so you go back in time and you kill him, and so on and so forth throughout all four dimensions for the rest of eternity. Okay, but what if you subscribe to the Avengers principle? You know, any changes in the past won't affect the past you came from, but could result in an infinite number of branch points into divergent timelines or parallel universes. In this theory, you can go back to the time you started in and everything you left behind will have remained the same. You've made no change to your own time, but you may have just royally screwed yourself in another timeline. I mean, I guess if you can live with that, you're probably fine. Oh, but you're going forward in time instead of back? Sure, head to a time in the far-flung future where everything is perfect. Of course, all your loved ones are dead, so you're forced to choose between them and paradise. Or, you know, it could be a nightmare hellscape, and you'll be burdened with that knowledge for the rest of your natural life. Knowing the future worked out real well for Sarah Connor, so have fun with that. So that's why we should just let time travel through us at its own pace rather than travel through time at ours. Got any reasons we missed? Leave us a comment below. And hey, for more deep dives on heady physics topics, give us a like and hit subscribe to catch more fact bites from us right on time. Please don't ask for more deep dives on heady physics topics.